there or is there not a magma chamber oh, underneath God. Yellowstone National Park? Yes. And is this magma chamber of sufficient size that if there was an eruption there, it could potentially be rated yes. as a super eruption? Could, right? Precisely, could. If there is an eruption, then there is a good possibility that uh, it's going to be a moderate one. Enough, Rick. If there's even the slightest chance of this happening, I want to know what that means. And we would be looking at between two and three thousand cubic kilometers of rock, gas, and ash erupting across the United States in a pattern that looks like this. Expects an eruption anytime soon, and possibly with devastating consequences for America. And the world. Jesus, Rick, just be honest with me. I'm being honest Are with you? you. Yes. This is going to be a big eruption. You've got to come with us. I don't need you to tell me what harmonic tremor means. If I agree to a red, everyone's going to think that we've got a super eruption on our hands. But I am not going to be held responsible for some kind of mass panic. Mr. Uh -huh. Lieberman, Mr. Lieberman. Yes, hang on. Mr. Hang on. Yes. Are you still denying the possibility of a super eruption? It's twice as likely as an asteroid strike, according to some experts. And half as unlikely as being struck by lightning, Miss Chin. And, and how, how many of us lose sleep over that? This is it, Matt. It started. Dress. I'm sorry to haul you away. No problem. Who have I got from USGS? No one. What? You can't get through to the field office at the moment. Hey, Dave. Michael Eldridge is on his way over. Is this uh, vacuum imagery all we have on this? Yeah, and it's only a projection. What? Yeah. Okay, Air Force, I need a plane up there as close as it can get taking a look at this thing. Let's brief the White House and little we know so far. Dave, get back on the line. I want to talk to Governor Marshall in Wyoming, Joe Foster at Homeland, and keep trying the Yellowstone field office. And Bob, please get me something else to wear. Sure. Mary? Jesus. You open the job, man. You need to take a look, man. You need to see what's going on. Make contact with Dave. Let him know what's happening. There are two kinds of volcanic eruptions, red and gray. In a red eruption, the magma, it's actually called lava when it's erupted, flows freely from the ground. Um, you've seen it on TV, this slow-moving flow of molten material. It's damn destructive in its own way, but slow, very slow. You can literally outpace a lava flow without breaking a sweat. Not so with a gray eruption. What you have there, you've got magma trapped by overlaying rock, okay? The pressure builds and builds to the point the whole thing blows. The magma under pressure turns to foam and gas, which bursts upward in a vertical column at twice the speed of sound, 50 kilometers up into the stratosphere. There are no cell phones Field permitted off. on this aircraft. I understand. I need to Sir, I have to ask you to turn your phone off. My name is Richard Lieberman. I'm the scientist in charge of Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. I'm receiving news of an emergency here that could affect the flight path and safety of this aircraft. Oh my God, has something happened? I, 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 need, I need to speak to the captain, please. Okay. Dave. Come in, Dave. This is Matt. Dave, this is Matt. Hey, Matt, it's me. 
I'm heading out to Bozeman. Where are you? Just to the northeast of Norris. What are you seeing? Well, it's a single vent. Moderate size at the moment. How far from Bozeman are you? About an hour. Okay, listen. Rick is on his way back from Washington. We got shaken up pretty good back at the field office. It's completely down. What can you do for us? I'll be up and running in 30 minutes. It's been estimated that within the first hour, 100 million tons of pumice, rock and ash were ejected, powered out by something with the explosive force of a thousand Hiroshima bombs. Then the wind carried the top of the column eastwards. Within an hour or so, pumice and ash began to fall on towns hundreds of miles away from Yellowstone. Cody, Billings, Idaho Falls, Bozeman, where Dave was. Can you give me a hand? I've just got a few things in the back of the truck to unload. Thanks a lot. Rick! Rick, it's Dave! Dave! Listen. How's this? Seismic activity? This is... Has it triggered an eruption? Yeah. Matt said it's a single vent. Okay. Dave, I need to determine the size of this vent. I need to do that as soon as possible, all right? All the equipment's down, and Matt can't get a clear view from the chopper. Just put that down anywhere. I'm booting up a link to... Please. Tell me you have a high-speed data port. Oh, yeah, it's right over there. Oh, thank God. Thank you. Oh, sorry, Rick. Yeah. Um, I'll have a satellite uplink in a few minutes. Should be able to see the ash cloud, and I'll patch in the back. Okay, listen, Dave, I need you to talk to Michael Eldridge in Washington, okay? Get a hold of him, just, you know, inform him about what's happening, and tell him that we need him to declare Red Level 3 emergency, all right? You got that? Red Level 3. I got it. All right, and if this vent gets any bigger, anything else opens up, then I need to know about that, Dave. Will do, boss. The biggest danger from an explosive eruption is the pyroclastic surge. It happens when the, uh, when the pressure of propelling the, the eruption column up into the air fluctuates for just a second, and part of the column spills from the side of the volcano. The surges from Mount St. Helens flattened every tree within miles and killed over 50 people. Let's just say we weren't going to hang around to watch that happen at Yellowstone. office too close. With hindsight, yes, but you have to be close to get accurate information. And uh, no one, 
No, no one could have anticipated the size of that search, its direction, or uh, its speed. Pyroclastic surges can travel at up to 800 kilometers per hour, with temperatures of up to 500 degrees. They incinerate everything in their path, absolutely everything. It's a uh, hell coming towards you. They didn't stand a chance. All of them? Are you sure? Jesus. Uh, all right, um, where's Jock? Mm -hmm. uh, no, no, I'm walking into FEMA now. Just hang on. Listen, I'm going to pass you over to Wendy. I've got Dave Price on the line. He's in a backup field office in Bozeman. Yeah, let's patch him through. Everyone, this is Michael Eldridge from USGS. Dave, this is Wendy Rice at FEMA. Do you have any update on the size of the eruption? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Jock Galvin left the scene by Chopper a little while back and said it was a single vent. But the GPS and SRI data show signs of swelling all over the park and increasing earthquake swarms. My guess is it's only a matter of time before we see new vents opening up. Thank you, Dave. Stay on the line and keep us up to date. Will do. Denver, bring all USAR teams to standby. Inform Governor Marshall this could be bigger than anticipated. Are we recommending evac? It's his call, but we're advising against. It's safer inside than on the highway. Well, as I was saying, our flight plan has us about 348 nautical miles south of Yellowstone at our closest point. So if uh, ash from your volcano does head our way, the Volcanic Ash Advisory Center will divert us long before we get anywhere near it. OK. Well, how often does VAC check the satellite? About every half hour. We can put in a call now for an update would make you feel better. Yeah, I, 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 I'd appreciate that. But you keep me informed. Sure. Thank you. We're just getting reports, unconfirmed so far, of a major volcanic explosion in Wyoming in the United States. Early reports from Wyoming say the eruption has killed literally thousands of people. Many cities near the volcano in the Midwest have been destroyed. Authorities now fear a humanitarian catastrophe on an unprecedented scale. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Boise, Idaho is reporting a citywide blackout. I'm getting reports of rolling blackouts west of Yellowstone. Ash fall on power and relay stations. Okay, tell our FEMA offices in Montana, Nebraska, Utah, and the Dakotas to shut down their power grids and switch to backup generators as of now, and make sure those generators are protected against the ash. I'd also advise them to shut down all air conditioning units. The ash will get everywhere. Okay. All federal buildings seem to seal up and start recycling their clear air. Go ahead, trigger two. I'm now monitoring the eruption column at level five zero zero. Indicates are below about two nine zero. The wind is westerly, but above that it bears around a seven or northwest. Over. Hank, Hank, you got those coordinates? Two nine zero. The wind is westerly. directly across major commercial air routes. Hank, I want all airspace across the central USA cleared and put east and west coast on standby. Michael, where is your guy? I need him here. Rick Lieberman? Yes. He's in there somewhere. He was flying back tonight. Oh, okay. Anyone need some blankets? Uh, here you go. So, it's a, it's a single vent. Single vent. Yeah. So, Mount St. Helens, then. Yeah, like you said. Yeah, yeah. What's that? Come on. That, that smell. Sulfur. Oh, dear. Oh, 
forward. Okay, we lost two and we're losing one. We lost both engines. Throttle back, both. I have four. I have the Guinea, one eight. Yeah, I got it. Does the guy have a zoom? Can you get him to zoom in? Trigger two, can you zoom in? Wait. Oh. Hey, you see that, Michael? Another one. Yeah. Yeah, that's vent number two opened up now. While it was just a single eruptive column, there was still a chance that things would be OK. But the, the second eruption, clearly there was so much magma and pressure in the chamber that it couldn't vent through a single column. Instead, the, the whole caldera began to unzip in a series of smaller eruptions. Once that started, we had, we had no idea how long it would go on for. Days, weeks, months. We just didn't know. Wing anti-ice. Uh, engine anti-ice. The PU. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, this is Captain Frank. We'll very shortly be making a precautionary landing in Cheyenne. Oh, God. The ash cloud has blasted the cockpit window. We're landing blind. On the back of the seat in front of you, clasp your hands under your knees. planes each year unexpectedly fly into ash clouds and on that night 35 did and that was just over the US flying into one of these ash clouds is, is worse than getting a dump truck full of sand thrown into your engines because volcanic ash was rock the ash melts over fuel nozzles, the turbine, various engine parts. Uh, the really amazing thing is, is how often the engines survive and, and restart once you get back into, into clean air. So we were uh, among the lucky ones. We, we got down in one piece. Uh, and by the time we did get down, no one else was taking off uh, anywhere. Reports of large numbers fleeing into Canada along Interstate 15 to 29. Lincoln, Nebraska is on standby to evacuate. Stand them down. I need to clear those roads and get me a transportation update on the Coast Guard. The Air Force is evacuating its planes at a basis at Minot, Grand Forks, Ellsworth, Nellis, Kirkland, Offutt, Peterson, Edwards. Is there anywhere they're not evacuating? The East Coast, basically. <laughs> Thank you. Wyoming has declared a state of emergency. The Vassar Federal Disaster to be called. Did you get that, Denver? Uh, guys. Hey, guys. Looks like we got another vent opened up. Three vents open. Michael, how bad is this going to get? Hello? Hey, it's me. Rick, where are you? Is that 
noise? It's sirens. Listen, Yellowstone's erupted. What? I, I can't talk now. I'm with Ken, and we're making for the FEMA office in Denver. Denver? What? I, I, wh when I get there, I'll call you. Oh, no, wait a minute, Rick. Listen, you... Fee, you know, I, I feel... Hello? Rick. Are you there? Rick. Initial reports suggest that a team of scientists from the U.S. Geological Survey who are monitoring the site from a field office within the park itself have been killed. The local towns of West Yellowstone and Bozeman are being evacuated amid scenes of panic and confusion. Well, meanwhile, the growing ash cloud is spreading south and east from Yellowstone, raining down its potentially lethal contents across a vast area. The ash is bringing the roads and freeways to a total. Find military installations. What are you doing? Hang on, hang on. Okay. Okay. There is a military installation about four clicks this way. They might have a conway to FEMA. We're not going to walk. We can't stay here, Ken. Pop the trunk. No, Rick. Rick, for God's sake, Rick, it's volcanic ash, we can't go out, Nit. When Vesuvius erupted, the people of Pompeii stayed in their houses. How do we know that, Ken? It was preserved in volcanic ash. Right. We, we'd already seen from previous eruptions, Mount St. Helens, Montserrat, Pinatubo, we, we'd already seen that the terrible damage that even small amounts of volcanic ash can do. If it gets in your eyes, it can blind you. When it's breathed in, it will mix with the, the moisture in your lungs to form a suffocating cement. Uh, it's also unbelievably dense. Just 20 centimetres can collapse a roof. Half that amount of the ash gets wet. Only people living within a 100 kilometre radius of Yellowstone had been evacuated. Everyone else caught under the ash cloud was in serious danger. Dave, are you getting this? Yeah, I'm seeing it. Two more vents makes five. I'd say the caldera is definitely opening up. What do you think, Michael? I concur with that.